The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Peter came up and asked Jesus, Lord, when my brother wrongs me, how often must I forgive him? Seven times? No, Jesus replied, not seven times. I say seventy times seven times. That is why the reign of God may be said to be like a king who decided to settle accounts with his officials. When he began his auditing, one was brought in who owed him a huge amount. As he had no way of paying it, his master ordered him to be sold, along with his wife, his children, and all his property in payment of the debt. At that, the official prostrated himself in homage and said, My Lord, be patient with me, and I will pay you back in full. Moved with pity, the master let the official go and wrote off the debt. But when that same official went out to meet a fellow servant who owed him a mere fraction of what he himself owed, he seized him and throttled him. Pay back what you owe, he demanded. His fellow servant dropped to his knees and began to plead with him. Just give me time and I will pay you back in full. But he would hear none of it. Instead, he had him put in jail until he paid back what he owed. When his fellow servants saw what had happened, they were badly shaken, went to their master and report the whole incident. His master sent for him and said, You worthless wretch! I cancelled your entire debt when you pleaded with me. Should you not have dealt mercifully with your fellow servant as I dealt with you? Then in anger, the master handed him over to the torturers until he paid back all that he owed. My heavenly Father will treat you in exactly the same way unless each of you forgives his brother from his heart. The Gospel of the Lord In our creed, we proudly confess that we believe in our Lord Jesus Christ, true God from true God. As Christians, we do not only Christ to be as such because of His capacity to perform magic tricks where other human beings are incapable of. In fact, during the time of Moses, our Lord Jesus Christ Himself, and even to our present times, we can see people who can perform magic tricks. But as members of the church, founded on Peter the Rock, we believe that indeed Jesus Christ is God, because our Lord Jesus Christ possesses qualities unique in Himself, which manifests His Godhead. That is, the power to give life and the power to forgive. Brothers and sisters, we are on the 24th Sunday in Ordinary Time, and the Church is leading us to a reflection on the mercy and forgiveness of God. As Christians, we ought to forgive the way God forgives. It was in the practice of this great virtue that St. Peter asked our Lord, Lord, if my brother sins against me, how often must I forgive? As many as seven times? Note that the number seven, which appeared in various biblical passages in the Old and New Testament, speaks of perfection and completeness. The parable in today's Gospel presents to us a perfect model of forgiveness when the Master, moved with compassion, let the servant go and forgave him the loan. In response to Peter, Jesus answered, I say to you, not seven times, but seventy 
times, seven times. Our Lord puts no quantitative limits to forgiveness. As sons and daughters of God, we have a Father who do not put limit to forgiveness. When God forgives, He makes a very important promise to us that we must also make when we forgive others. God says in the book of the prophet Jeremiah, I will forgive their sins and I will no longer remember their wrongs. I, the Lord, have spoken. I remember the time when I was still undergoing my theological studies in the seminary and we were discussing the details about the sacrament of penance. In the Roman Catholic Church, there is the seal of confession. It is the absolute duty of the priest not to disclose anything that they learn from penitents during the course of the sacrament of confession. Since priests were given the power of the keys, the power to forgive sins, which Christ granted to the church, it is Christ himself who forgives in the person of the priest. When God forgives, he does not keep count. He does not keep a record of our sins. He chooses not to remember them. He lets us start a new life. He lets us start anew. He lets us start once again. By virtue of our baptism, we became Christians, and therefore we are followers of our Lord Jesus Christ Himself. The Catechism of the Catholic Church teaches us that Jesus became man to be our model of holiness. The second reading reminds us that wherever and whenever we are, we are the Lord's. Jesus is the paradigm of forgiveness for us. Every day we are put to the test of forgiveness. From the rising of the sun unto its setting, we are faced with various instances for us to be forgiving in our dining tables early in the morning while we line in for our ride in the jeep on our way to work or in school in our school and work itself and many other circumstances we should not suppress the feeling of anger towards our fellow men within ourselves we may hide it for a time, but we ourselves are clearly aware of the feeling of wrath inside our hearts. It is like installing an unnecessary program in your computers or in our computers. We may not use the program or we may put it somewhere in our hard drives, but we know that it is there. It occupies a considerable space. We must forgive and forget and learn from our experiences. The master forgave the loan of the debtor because the debt was so huge that he had no way of paying it. The amount was so enormous that it would even cost himself along with his wife, his children, and his property. What a very large sum! In the same way, God has forgiven us of so many things we could ever possibly pay. The first epistle of John tells us that if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unworthiness. Therefore, we must forgive others of relatively small offenses. To acknowledge that we were forgiven should lead us also to forgive others as we continue our journey towards the kingdom of heaven. It is our continued prayer that we will not be like the unforgiving servant. After having experienced the compassion and forgiveness of good master and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a mere fraction 
have what he himself owed, fraction of the amount that was cancelled from him, seized his servant and started to choke him, demanding, Pay back what you owe. He even had his servant put in prison until he paid back the debt. Could anyone nourish anger against another and expect forgiveness from God? Heavenly Father, teach us to forgive others from our heart. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.